And now, Elephants on Parade with Nancy Giles. The coast along Newport, Rhode Island is lined with Gilded Age summer homes, once owned by the Vanderbilt and Duke families. But now you might say, <coughs> it's been invaded. I think it's the closest you can possibly feel to being in a herd of 100 elephants. You heard right, elephants. It's okay to touch them, right? Hugs and kisses are very much welcome. Oh. We just don't want anyone to, you know, try and ride an elephant. Have yeah. people tried to ride them? Uh, occasionally, we have a little bit of over-enthusiasm, <laughs> but we know it's coming from a good place. These sculptures are part of an Art and Newport initiative. And here on the campus of Salve Regina University, as part of a new exhibit called the Great Elephant Migration. Ruth Ganesh is co-founder of the Coexistence Collective and part of Elephant Family USA, two of the groups behind the exhibit. And she says they'll soon be migrating around the U.S. It's an elephant takeover, that's what's <laughs> happening here. And they're gonna march across America like a herd of Trojan elephants, but spreading a message of love and empathy. The invasion is a positive invasion. It's very positive. <laughs> it's spreading a beautiful message of coexistence. What's not to love? Humans coexisting with animals is nothing new. But as both populations increase, Ganesh says we must figure out how to live together so that we can all thrive. It's a real issue in conservation worlds, um, this coexistence issue and how to solve that overlap as we continue to put in trains and roads and towns. Right. So unless we want to live in a sort of zoo world where you only go and see elephants behind fences or right. animals behind fences, right. you've got to figure out how to overlap again. And respect their territory yes. as they have in many ways respected ours, I guess, yes. right? Just see ourselves as part of one big family. No one's bigger or better or more important than the next. In the Nilgiri Hills in southern India, a community of 200 indigenous artisans constructed the sculptures. For them, sharing space with animals is second nature. They kind of admire and worship elephants in India in particular as they move through. And it's really important for that affection and that relationship to stay alive. Tarj Takekara lives in India and is a co-founder of the exhibit. He says elephants are increasingly being driven into human spaces. I think the biggest problem is uh, lantana. It suppresses the growth of all the other native vegetation that animals used to eat. So once lantana completely takes over an area, there's nothing left for uh, animals to eat, and that forces them out of the forests more. So he decided to turn that lantana, a toxic weed, into something beautiful. It gives people a livelihood and it clears lantana from the forest. So it's a kind of win-win situation for both the people and nature. Using lantana to create these sculptures is an intricate and detailed process. Each elephant takes about three months to make. The adult sculptures stand up to 11 feet tall and can weigh over 750 pounds. Making these animals has been life-changing for the artists. They were doing something that was valued regionally, nationally, and globally. So everybody suddenly recognized them as creators of these beautiful elephants, rather than as unskilled manual laborers. And I think that has been the biggest shift for all of them. Their status in society has changed significantly, and of course the revenue that they get. Here in the U.S., the sculptures can sell for more than $20,000. Proceeds will go to conservationist efforts across the globe. And this week, the herd hits the road. Destination, New York City's Meatpacking District downtown. When you talk about elephants and art, there is that idea of the elephants almost being an art piece in their own right. I think it was Picasso that said that the elephant is evidence that God is an artist. I mean, there is no greater curious looking animal on the planet. And everybody loves them. I'm yet to meet the person that doesn't love them. <laughs> 